Do you have a service dog? Do you know anybody that does? Do you have any idea what a service dog can do for someone? All right. Well, you have had one interesting day the other day with uh, with Lon. You want to tell us about him? Yes. Uh, it was, I, I met a, an extraordinary human being. Uh, when I met him, I, I have no expectation else than what I read. Okay, yeah, it's a guy doing volunteers of it. He's a vet, he's at the dog. But when I met him, I realized it's, it's an outstanding individual. And Gander is also an, an outstanding dog. And I'll try to summarize that. For instance, Lon Hodge uh, is an army vet. He was a medical corps instructor, clinician for six years. He went to the OCS and ended his military career as a commission officer. Lon also is a certified employee, assistant professional, a CEAP, former hospital clinical director. He has received as a poet from National Endowment for the Art, the NEA, a fellowship in poetry and has been professor in psychology and literature. As a poet and writer, Lon won a few national awards before he became too sick to even write. His connection with Gander, the service dog, has helped him to overcome a lot of difficulties due to his PTSD and arthritis. He's now back penning poetry and stories with two new books in the work. He has been doing internet work since, take that, since 1979, when he was a member of a task force Delta, a social media style think tank at the US Army War College. He became the model for several current social media platform. Lon is also sitting on the board of many nonprofit organization and charities, and he do volunteer consulting for their social media presence. In the course of his career, Lon, and this is a amazing part, Lon has his own difficulties. Nevertheless, he volunteer. I would say 365 days a, a year, practically. He, he volunteer across the country. He volunteer with the veteran. He, he, in his past, he, he came across addiction, poverty, vide battlements, uh, suicide, near death from torture or more. He has seen, I would say, the darkest side of humanity and he survived by doing his best to help other people suffering along with, with him. All he's doing, all is volunteer work. There's no pay, no money, no financial reward. He's not looking for any form of tribute, any form of praise, any form of com financial compensation. He's doing that out of his heart for people to help them. Gander is his dog, service dog. He got Gander for himself first for his arthritis and PTSD issue. And Gander become a model, a role model, a service dog role model for other dogs, for other uh, user of service dog. I did an interview with him and uh, he is an amazing person. I salute him for his work. I thank him for his kindness and generosity and compassion for other human beings and animals and dogs alone. And uh, if we have, if we're ready, Katie, we can play the video. Okay, I'm going to. I'm yeah. going to uh, exit you. Okay. Okay. And then. We've traveled to 46 states so far. We do seminars around the country at no cost um, to schools, veterinary schools, medical schools, uh, hospitals, 
for CEUs, whatever, uh, elementary schools, high schools, the whole bit. And uh, the kids are amazing. I mean, uh, of all the groups we teach, everything from veterinarians to physicians to, uh, you know, second and third graders are the most amazing. They ask the best questions. You know, they, they really, they totally get it. If he has a, a sign on that says, don't touch, don't touch, don't, you know, don't, don't in, interact with the team at all. Now, I have one on Gander that says, ask to pet. And, and so if they ask, then, you know, we'll allow that to happen. But I, I teach them a protocol for doing that, how to approach a service dog. And then to know that their interaction with the service dog isn't going to be the same as it is with an ordinary dog. You know, they need to be infinitely more cautious. We show them all the aspects of the dog. You know, I mean, Gander, Gander is a great deal of fun. As we go along on our travels, we also do uh, planned acts of community kindness. And those planned acts of community kindness are things we've identified in advance. Um, that are needs by people. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and those needs are like uh, somebody may need an adaptive wheelchair, or somebody may need a scooter, or somebody may need uh, crutches, or any number of things. And uh, we'll get the community together and see if we can't provide that. And then the third phase of what we've done over the last couple of years uh, is work a lot with homeless veterans and going actually into the camps, seeing what they need, and then trying to provide them with survival bags that will help them, you know, get through, the, get through the summer, get through the winter. You know, we try to hand them out two or three times a year and make it climate-specific, uh, you know, sleeping bags, uh, ground pads, things like that that they need, food. Uh, and these are guys that, for one reason or another, you know, aren't, aren't going to be aren't going to be really good in the system. We've noticed that everywhere we go in the country, the, the, the demographics are different. You know, we tend to look for people, uh, like in Colorado Springs, you can tell different times of day in different areas. You can tell where the, uh, the people who are active alcoholics and drug addicts are and where the people who have just been economically or emotionally displaced are. Uh, you know, two-thirds of those people are not there because they're alcoholics or addicts or... Uh, or, or or have done anything wrong. They're there because they've been, you know, some something's happened in their life that's, you know, pushed them out there. And there are places like in Colorado Springs where you'll see as many as uh, 100 to 200 tents pitched, you know, or people just living on the ground, you know, with uh, with ground claws. And uh, and they, they tend to congregate together and they tend to protect one another and they take care of one another. It's a... It's, uh, they're getting, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Some of the some of the homeless encampments. We find that about twenty percent of the people that we encounter are veterans, and we tend to serve them first as we can, and then and then encourage them to get to uh, services wherever they can. So whenever we go somewhere, we try to do as many things as we possibly can while we're there. We've got uh, portable showers. We've got an we've got an outside shower. Um, they can they can actually shower. Uh, we can use that to carry equipment with us. We've got uh, volunteers around the country. You know, Gander's got, what, almost 400,000 followers on social media in different areas. And, you know, we'll tell people in advance we're coming. And, and people have been really kind about helping us. Well, I got Gander later on. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I was injured in the service. I had a lot of, a lot of things that happened in the, in the military. And, uh, but things really didn't. And, and then I had things that happened before the military that were exacerbated by the military. And so, you know, I have what's called complex PTSD. And I think you've seen that in some of the, the films you've looked at. And so that, uh, and that was exacerbated in the military. So, and then I also had autoimmune arthritis and, you know, I've, I've broken because of martial arts, I've broken probably every bone in my body. So at one time or there are times when I literally can't get up out of a chair, you know, it's, 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 it's that difficult, but it was several years later that I recognized that I had a need for a dog. And, uh, just on the off chance that uh, I, I saw a thing on television and I called the agency right away, you know, contacted them by email and, and they encouraged me to do an application. I got with my doctors. It's an arduous process. You know, they don't, they just don't give away $35,000 dogs, you know, and uh, uh, which thankfully I didn't have to pay for. And uh, seven months later, which is really extraordinarily short, you know, they, uh, they paired me with Gander. You know, I really... I was probably, I was terrified, you know, I thought, gosh, what if the dog doesn't like me, what if this dog, you know, I mean, 
you know, what if this dog becomes more of a burden in public, you know, because people are wanting to know why you have him and all those things. I was, so I was terrified. I really didn't think so much about, you know, uh, you know, what was going to happen other than uh, it was all bad things until, until Gander came into my life. And then was, you know, it was all for the first four months. It was really difficult. You know, you have, yeah, people stop you. We can't, get, we can't get from one end to Walmart to the other or, you know, any store from one end to the other without getting stopped probably 20 times. What kind of dog, you know, what kind of dog is that? You know, and, 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 and I, encourage people I encourage people not to do that, you know, with, with handlers. With us, you know, we... We sit down, we talk to them, we tell them why, why, you know, why I use Gander, what he's about, what he does. And then I also give them a card. And on the card, it has a list of service dog etiquette rules. And one of those is don't interrupt a, you know, a, a team in the future, you know. Uh, that dog is medical equipment, so we want him to have access. It was a long learning curve, you know, four months of a lot of anxiety, you know, when I first got him. He's... Uh, Everybody we, have Everybody, we have an expression among all the people that know him really well, and, and, and they say Gander knows. And uh, he knows when you're not feeling well, and he'll attend to you. He won't leave your side. You know, if, uh, he, if we're with friends and he knows I'm okay, and you're something's going on with you physically or emotionally, he'll go park himself right next to you and uh, until, you know, to kind of indicate that he's there for you if he needs to be. He's tuned into everything at all times. It's kind of crazy. But but he's always tuned into me. So even if he were playing with one of his friends, I give him permission to play with about three or four people who he adores in life. And uh, if I just make a slight sound, he's always checking. He'll go catch a ball and then he'll look to me, you know, see if I need anything, and then he'll play again, and then look to me, and uh, if I make a single sound, he'll immediately come back to me right away, and uh, so he's he's always on task, you know. Well, you got to see Gander work when you came in, you know, you came in me very quickly, and uh, one of Gander's tasks, from a psychological point of view, one of Gander's tasks is to get up and create space between you and me. And, uh, and he did that right immediately, you know, when he saw you coming quickly in, in my direction. But he's not aggressive. He doesn't bark or, you know, he's not going to bite you or anything. He's just going to make sure that, that I have room to breathe. Uh, so he's always at work, and I've used him at different times for mobility issues. When I first got him, it was mostly for mobility stuff. And... Uh, and and now mostly for PTSD kinds of issues, and then also now he's become kind of a training model, you know, for for places all over the country like you were talking about, and we'll you know we'll do seminars and I'll show them what he's able to do. You know, he can pick things off the floor, he can op open doors, turn on lights. Uh, uh, he has about he has about well over well over a hundred tasks that he can do. You know that uh, that can assist me when I need to be assisted. Anybody who's ever met Gander knows that he's different you know even for a, even for a service dog i mean any service dog is is extraordinary i mean they're uh it's amazing the work they do and in 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 the work they do in some conditions when things are really hard but but in gander's case you know it, you notice right away there's something special about gander everybody always goes he looks like a wise old wizard or he looks like a bodhisattva or you know he looks uh you know he just right away gives the illusion that you know that that Something's going, something's going on, and it's, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's true. Anybody who's ever met him can tell you that Gander has a special sense about most things. Yeah, Gander was the, yeah, Gander was the 2014 uh, American, Kennel uh, American Kennel Club Award for Canine Excellence, their service dog hero for that year. Uh, he was the only mixed breed that ever got that, which was kind of cool. And then uh, 2016, he was the service dog hero for the... Uh, American Humane Association, their annual Hero Dog Awards, and on Hallmark Channel, and uh, he was the Rotary International uh, Home District uh, Humanitarian Patriot Award winner. He's won, you know, a, a lot of awards and things like that for the for the work we've done. And you know, we we tend not to we tend not to talk about those very much. You know, it's like that's not. That's not why we do anything. We get, you know, no, we, we get no, no we get no financial gain from what we do. We get uh, and, and we really don't care about the merit badges. You know, I mean. That was absolutely excellent. Wow. Thank you. You had a wonderful time with him. You know, I saw that uh, uh, Lon had posted and he had said something about that uh, Gander had come in front of you. Yes. 
when you got there. So that's unusual. Yes, and I was I was entering the building, entering the room, and Gander stand between me and Lon. So I did not shake hand with Lon. I salute him, having Gander between me and him. And I didn't know the training of the dog, but my instinct was not to force my way to Lon. Right, and yeah. I salute him from a distance, like five, seven feet from him. And then I say, ah, it's me. Then I went and pick up my equipment, and then Gander was just fine. He, uh, <laughs> he kept, and Lon published two pictures of me setting up my equipment yesterday. And you see Gander looking at me, watching every single move I was doing. Which right. Was very interesting. And a little bit later, uh, Lon sent Gander to me to, you know, so I can pep, pep him, like, you know, touch him and contact. I have some contact about him. My, also my perception of, of uh, Gander is it remind me a character from Harry Potter. I cannot tell. Oh yeah, yeah. Character. You remember what character? Yeah, from yeah, Harry yeah. Potter. Yeah. But also, I have the intimate feeling that it's a human in a dog's body. Yes. You look at you yeah. like with an uh, a perception or something profound in his look, in his regard, in his way of looking at you, and you know there's a communication there's a conscious communication between us instantly well, yes you know i'm going to show you guys some pictures now here of of i'm going to move this around a little bit no i'm just going to leave it just like it is the connection between lon and gander is just phenomenal i see this with him all the time i'm just going to share some of these that i have here Look at this. I love this because Lon is just like Gander's part of the family. And isn't that the way a, a, all dogs should be, but particularly a service dog, because here's a special dog that's doing something to make your life easier and make your life better. And I know that Lon feels that and, and the, the respect that they have for each other is just phenomenal. You talk about unconditional love. Hey, folks. That's where unconditional love is when you look at Lon and, and Gander. That's for sure. So I'm sorry, go ahead. And this love, this unconditional love is not only from Lon to Gander, but it's Lon to everybody is helping and serving. That's and right. And I admire that. I have a, a full admiration for that. I, well, as you know, being a, a diehard dog lover, anyone that does something that uses dogs to help people that's a super gift that's a gift beyond any other gift you could ever receive so when a guy when a dog is put into a position where they can provide a service and show people that they matter and uh, help them with their difficulties emotionally, physically, and guide them into an area where they truly are benefiting. Oh my gosh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful gift. Yes. So anyway, I wanted to show another, uh, another little video that I put together uh, just to show our great respect and honor to have Lon and Gander on our show. Uh, we're, we're having Lon be a regular on the show, actually, which we're excited about. Uh, uh, and, of course, we have many other service dogs. We have Rico, uh, Rico Lockwood with Ellen Lockwood and the CCI, the Canine uh, Companions of Independence. We, we've got them coming on the show. So we're very excited about that. But let me show you this video. I'm going gonna, gonna to say goodbye to you again, Gaetan. <laughs> just before we leave. Oh, okay. May I add a little detail? Yes, sure. After the, the the filming with Lon, I spent an hour and a half about. My feeling was this is just scratching the surface of the subject, and I'm looking forward to do more documentary with Lon and Gander in the coming week and month. So not yes. only Gander will uh, Lon would be a guest on our show, but I would like to go to Seb in action with Gander and in different circumstance or different situation and document that for our show so you can 
play the video. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, Kate. I'm gonna that, that little note there. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'll be right back with you again. Nope. Okay, folks. Here's another biscuit for you. Go ahead, help yourself. The show's coming on. <laughs> So that's it. That's our show, everyone. I am back. Okay, that's it. That's our show. We had a had a wonderful time. Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry for the little glitch in the beginning when we first got there, but go ahead, Gaetan. You were going to say something. Yes, I want to say something. Uh, first of all, Lon Rod, uh, Lon Aj deserve all the support we can provide to him for his work. So if you like this video, I'm going to cry. Like the show, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really am. Support. He deserve he deserve all the support we can provide to this guy and his work. It's unbelievable what he's doing. I left him yesterday. He was going so called on vacation with his trailer uh, and gander, but he told me that once he's on vacation, he has some volunteer work to do. So there's no vacation for him. His his volunteer work is his life, and gander is part of his life. And gander is an example for helping other is an example of service dog dedicated to humanity helping humanity and this is absolutely an incredible cause so if you like this video share it present talk to your friend about it and let know your friend that this video exists and this guy need all the support he can get Yes, and we'll provide a link on how you can help to support Lon and, and Gander. And we, we, we couldn't be more excited about our show and, and what we're doing. We know that we'll make a difference to you and to people in your lives. And if you do know somebody that uh, needs a service dog or even a, how about, do you know, do you know a, a vet that has a service dog that's homeless? That shouldn't be, folks. We need to help these people. Let's all join together and help support Lon and his efforts. He's he's helping us, so I think we should help him. And of course, with his dog Gander, that's a real plus. <laughs> okay, everyone, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. See you next week. Oh, see you next week. Same time, same place. Yes. <laughs>